Hello, my name is Gennard Garcia, Technical Marketing Engineer at Pulse Secure. Thank you once again for coming in and viewing my video blog. And today's blog is about the different deployment modes that we offer using our Virtual Traffic Manager. Before I start, the Virtual Traffic Manager is an advanced application delivery controller that offers different acceleration, optimization, and security options that you can provide to your clients for an advanced and better experience for the users. Before I start, I would like to give you a list of the different deployment modes that we have. First, we have the simple network. And I'll go to details of what these are. We have the private and the public network topology or deployment option. And then the three is the multiple traffic manager option. So these are the three different options that we can deploy our solution. So in these three items, there are differences, uh, obviously. There's advantages, disadvantages, and I'll tell you uh, as we, I go on and describe and draw it up on the, on the whiteboard uh, on how they are configured. So let's start with uh, the simple network. A simple network configuration, you know, we deploy our VTM, traffic manager, in the middle. And typically, we have our servers. And then we have our client network. So we'll have multiple clients here. In the simple network, we call this thing also as a flat or layer two topology. Uh, our address space is going to be 192.0.2.x. This is typically deployed in most POCs or uh, test labs or uh, QA environment because it's a lot easier to deploy. You don't have to re-engineer your whole entire network to come up with these solutions. So since we have this address space or subnet, uh, I'm just going to assign you know, the requirements in order to run this configuration. One thing that we need on the VTM is that we need the TIP traffic IP. This is the aggregation of the request that's coming into the TIP that's being uh, load balanced within the servers in the back end. And de depending on the, the load balancing algorithm, that's how it's going to send from the server one or server two or vice versa. It just depends on how uh, it's provisioned on the pool configuration of the traffic manager. I have another session that I've covered specifically uh, detailing the different algorithms that we offer in the traffic manager. So feel free and watch that as well. So addressing these things. So if my client is all in the same address space, I would just assign this at a dot 10. You know, on my servers, probably dot .50, And if I have more, I can just add in 52, 53. And then for the tip, which is the, uh, also what they call it a virtual IP, um, in the other uh, SLVs or ADC world, I'm going to call this, I'm going to address this as dot .20. Okay, so when the request comes in, it hits the VIP, the VIP goes to accordingly, depending on what uh, load balancing algorithm has been pre-selected, okay? So that's a simple, very easy, you know, uh, very easy to configure, it's a layer two. Okay, so let's move on to the next option, which is the private and public network uh, deployment mode. Similarly, we put everything in the middle, our traffic manager takes the, the, the request, but this time we have to split the network into two. This is your public, which resides your clients, right? And then you have your private address, which resides your servers, the applications. So I'm going to call server one, server two, right? Let's just say my public address space or subnet would be 182.0.2.x. 
and on my private side is 192.02.x. So I'm just going to address them accordingly. On the S1, I'm going to address it probably .10, .11, and then anything accessible from here, I will address it as, for the, this is for the tip, traffic IP, I would address it as .20. And then since this is a totally different network, I will address this thing as 182.0.2.10. And if you have ad additional um, um, clients, you could just address them accordingly. So this is what we call the uh, uh, private and public uh, network topology. This is commonly used in production environment to pretty much increase security and provide reverse proxy capability in the, reverse, uh, in the, in the production environment. Obviously, you will have uh, to have multiple interfaces. You need at least two, but in this case, if we need to uh, configure them in a, in a best practices configuration, we need at least three interfaces, and I explained to you why. So you need the public, you need the private, and then the fourth one is going to be for your management. Um, so if you want to uh, enhance security, you know, you can have your administrator just uh, manage their uh, services or configuration of the BTN separately. So, um, very easy also to configure. Uh, it requires uh, some natting on the back end for the tip so that it's accessible. Um, it, uh, you know, this is commonly used in production environment as I mentioned. So now let's move on to the more uh, critical uh, deployment mode, which means that you want full redundancy across. Once again, we deploy our VTM into two. And this time we have switches across. And then we're just going to address them. But also, we have to divide it again. This is your private side with an address of 192.02.x. And then you have your public side, which is 182.02.x, right? And then probably we have uh, some routers here to the internet and some clients as well. Okay, so that's how it looks like. On this side, we will have our server one, server two, or more servers accordingly. So pretty much we have to address all these things separated. The advantage here is that if one fails, if this fails, we can actually recover from another virtual traffic manager without incurring any disruption on the existing traffic. There's other acceleration features, which is called the DPA. We have that available in the traffic manager as well. Data plane acceleration. Uh, it just requires additional uh, set of CPU requirements as well as uh, memory uh, because it's uh, uh, session intensive and processing intensive. So if you enable this thing, look at our uh, guide that could provide you the details of how it will uh, you will require to provision on your virtual appliance. So to address these things, you know, you would have to address all the interfaces. So you would uh, address this thing as dot one, dot two, dot four, dot five, you know, and then accordingly, you could basically address this thing as well as uh, dot one, dot two, um, dot three, dot four. So you could basically uh, make it like a redundant configuration. It just requires more additional interfaces, but again, this is commonly used in the production environment. Um, this is provi it provides reverse proxy, as you can see, 182 going to 192 subnet. So it gives you added security as well as uh, uh, better uh, uh, redundancy on your solution.